This is actually the first Mass that I presided at for daily Mass since August 4th. I've been at a lot of Masses and can celebrate it, but you know, with everything going on, it's like everybody else is presiding. And so it's like, oh, this, this is good. It's good to be back uh, into the routine. So today we celebrate the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary into Heaven. And you know what happens when you assume you go body and soul into Heaven, right? Right, Father. That we have this grace of Mary. Where Jesus says, because you lived a total yes, you'll enter into my joy as the first fruits of what will happen to all of us, God willing and in his mercy, at the end of time. When at the end of the world, we have the resurrection of the dead and our bodies are reunited with our souls. And then we will be body and soul in heaven as well. And the church uses this image of the, of the Ark of the Covenant. We actually heard a little bit about, if you had gone to a vigil mass, you would have heard a little bit about this in terms of how the, the reading was about the, um, the Ark of the Covenant coming to, um, to Jerusalem as David is bringing it forth. And then uh, we hear about it in this book of Revelation, the first reading today. God's temple in heaven was opened and the Ark of His Covenant could be seen in the temple. A great sign appeared in the sky, a woman clothed with her son, and that the church is seen, at least since uh, St. John Damascene of the 7th and 8th century, that Mary is the new Ark of the Covenant. And you remember the Ark, you know, the, this past week I asked some of the boys, I said, how many of each animal did Moses bring on the Ark? And they most of them got it wrong. Some of them finally got it. It wasn't Moses. It was Noah that brought animals onto the ark. Right? So, none of you would have gotten tricked by that. No, of course not. But Moses did have an ark though, right? It was not, not the one with all the animals, but rather the one that Indiana Jones went after, right? Uh, it was the, the lost ark, the, the ark of the covenant the one that uh, was carried before the Israelites as they, went through the, as they went through the Jordan into the Promised Land. It was the one that went into the Temple. And this Ark of the Covenant was seen as a dwelling place of God Most High. That when they brought it into the new Temple that Solomon had just built, suddenly the whole place was filled with this cloud. Remember that cloud that led the Israelites through the desert, the glory Shekinah cloud, the very presence of Almighty God, because His ark had come into the temple. And now we see Mary is the bearer of the presence of God. She bears God to Elizabeth. And I'm not going to get into scripture study here too deeply, but all the language in this visitation message that we heard in the gospel today, that's the language uh, of the Ark of the Covenant, the three months and being brought into this home, and all these things that we hear about in the Old Testament with David bringing the Ark of the Covenant into Jerusalem. That Luke pointing out, do you see? Mary is the Ark of the Covenant, and she's bearing the presence of God bringing God into the midst of John the Baptist and Elizabeth. And she brings God to us as well. She draws us into a deeper, intimate relationship with Jesus. She's the fastest, the easiest, the safest way into our Lord's heart. The reason why I was noticing that the last time I celebrated Mass was daily Mass was on August 4th was because that was the Feast of St. John Vianney. And that was the day out in Tucson that we consecrated the Fraternity of Priests to Jesus through Mary. And so I talked about the, the Magnificat as well as part of that, uh, that homily. And here we have the Magnificat, Mary's Song of Praise. And she says, my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. But in another translation, it says, 
my soul magnifies the Lord. And I love that image. I think about growing up when I would go to my dad's work. He had a magnifying glass in his desk. And I thought I was Sherlock Holmes as I got to play with that magnifying glass. But, you know, what does that magnifying glass do? It makes things small become bigger. That you can see things more clearly and, and, and more distinctly and bigger. And God used Mary to magnify him. To show his greatness and his glory even more in this world. And the beautiful thing is, God wants to use us as his magnifying glass as well. We can cry out with Mary, my soul magnifies the Lord. Now, the problem with us is we got a lot of dirt on our magnifying glass. So we got to go to confession and make sure that, that the magnifying glass can be clear. So that people aren't looking at me when they see me, but rather they're looking through me to see God more clearly. And I think this is so important. That we are called as Christians to magnify the Lord in our world. We magnify the Lord in our bodies, in our souls, that we're called by our actions, by our words, to magnify the love and the mercy of Almighty God. Through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, may we truly be ma that magnifying glass, magnifying God to the people around us so that they may know how deeply they are loved, how intimately they are loved, how God has the head over heels, overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love for each person that he has created.